Time. The auto sector took a hit today after Stellantis issued a full year profit warning because of deterioration in the global industry backdrop and growing competition in China. Aston Martin also warning about its profit. Joining us now is Mark Fields, former Ford CEO and a CNBC contributor. Mark, good to see you. So hard to sell cars in China because its consumer is strapped, hard to sell cars profitably in Europe with Chinese cars flooding in. How does this resolve? Well, it's a really tough environment, John, as you mentioned. Uh, you know, it's a worsening outlook, particularly in Europe and in China. And if you're a German or a European-based uh, OEM, it's going to get really tough, and particularly the German uh, brands. I mean, part of it is because they get a, a, a lot of their sales and profitability from China, and that market has slowed. Uh, you also have, at the same time, you could say, is it a cyclical change or a secular change as the Chinese consumers start preferring more domestic brands? Uh, so it's going to get tough. So I think what you're going to see from the European automakers because of this situation, you're going to see job cuts. I think you're going to see factory closures. And in particular, I think you're going to see a factory closure, too, in Germany. And at the same time, some of the governments, maybe the German government, you know, creating a cash for clunkers type of incentives to support the industry. But it's going to be very, very tough. And at the same time, particularly in the European market, they've opened the door to these very affordable EVs uh, that the European automakers have to sell to meet their CO2 emission requirements from the uh, regulations. So um, b because of that, are we less likely to see tariffs widespread in the Western world uh, against these Chinese EVs? Well, I think obviously you're seeing that here in the U.S. They, 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 you know, Europe has given us a precursor of what may potentially happen here in the U.S. And I think that's why you saw the U.S. government increase the tariffs uh, from about 27 percent to over 100 percent. In Europe, what I thought was interesting, John, was, you know, originally a couple of months ago, six months ago, they were talking about 35, 40 percent tariffs on uh, Chinese EVs. I think that's only in the final documents, only around 10 or 12 percent. Um, you know, you're going to have the politicians, you know, uh, discussing with the OEMs their cost reduction closures, uh, cost reduction actions, which may include plant closures and job cuts which runs right into their decisions to allowing these Chinese EVs to come in, you know, take a lot of market share from uh, from the automakers. And they're going to have to take some cost actions to right their businesses. Mm. And it does seem like the U.S. is taking its cue from some of these lessons we're learning in Europe with China sending so many of its EVs into that market, whether it's 100 percent tariffs on Chinese made EVs here, which was implemented during the summer, or now, just in the past week, this proposal to ban Chinese software and hardware on connected vehicles on American roads. I uh, want to get your thoughts on that and how that policy, all of that policy, continues to evolve here. Well, I think, you know, Morgan, as you know, the Chinese government has supported, whether it's through subsidies, incentives, or otherwise, to Chinese manufacturers to develop their EV ecosystem. And they now have 9 million units of excess capacity that they're going to sell somewhere outside of China. So I think it's very appropriate for the U.S. government uh, to take actions, not only on economic, but as you mentioned, uh, security guidelines. But make no mistake about it, you know, the, the automakers, the Western automakers, have to face off with the Chinese brands across the globe. So they get a little bit of breathing room to get their act together and, and get their costs down, particularly around EVs here in the U.S., but they have to compete globally. And that's why it's so important for automakers like Ford and GM and others to create low-cost EVs to fight this challenge that the uh, Chinese brands are presenting around the world. Mm. Speaking of, the fact that Ford is set to offer free chargers to EV buyers through year-end, what does that signal? Well, listen, it, all the projections of how the market was going to grow uh, have not come to fruition. And you've had the automakers put in products and capacity, and they're faced with a decision, right? They're faced with a decision, do they increase incentives or giveaways uh, to uh, increase demand, or do they cut production? And I think what you're seeing, Morgan, uh, across the, the, the OEMs, you're seeing them do both. And in the case of Ford, you know, I do think they have the right strategy because it's not only about EVs, they have hybrids. But they said, listen, rather than putting more incentive on their F-150 Lightning or their Mach-E, 
let's give the customer uh, a free uh, charging infrastructure for their home where they may see that as a better value. But the bottom line is the OEMs have to incentivize the markets or they have to cut production.